All right, everybody. Welcome back to Vice City. We have Tommy Versetti here. We are fixing to head on over to uh, back over to the lawyer's office of Ken Rosenberg, the L on the map. He is our first boss. He is going to be setting us up with our early missions here. Um, we are right outside of the Ocean View, I think it is. Is that the the name of our? Is that the name of our? Yep, the Ocean View Hotel here. That is the name of our initial safe house. <clears throat> and looking back at the last video, I got kind of interrupted as I went in. I forgot to say, look at the UI there. I kind of got cut off. Look at the UI. You will never see a more fabulous UI than this until we get to the Ballad of Gay Tony. So there we are. Okay, we're going to get the game started. We have been, this is Tommy Versetti. He has just served 15 years in the big house. 15 years in prison for for uh, a, a, a hit that went bad and doing time for the Ferrelli family, who are currently the most powerful family in GTA, in, uh, in Liberty City. Um, they've lost a lot of power between this and GTA 3. Remember, GTA 3 is actually set 15 years after this game. You know, we've gone back in time here. The Ferrellis here are the most powerful family in Liberty City. In GTA 3, it's the Leones who are the most powerful family. And the Ferrellis have been reduced to just a few individuals, basically centered in Marco's Bistro. So we are going to go ahead and get the game started here and see what the next mission is. Okay, let's go down here. Like I said, whoops, let's let this cop go by here. As I said, I usually steal the Oceanic. In fact, we're going to go ahead and grab the Fagio here. Um, normally, it wouldn't be sitting here. I told y'all wrong last time. I did correct it on screen saying that you can store vehicles along the road here. You actually cannot. Um, there is no vehicle storage here at our first safe house. Um, any vehicle that you leave parked out there will disappear whenever you stop the game and come back. It does not save them. Or if you travel over to the other island and you at load in that part of the island, it's not going to save them either. <clears throat> the only reason that it saved it this time was because we just happened to have... Uh, the, the last time, whenever I recorded the first episode, I didn't save it correctly, so I, I went back and replayed that very, uh, very first mission there where I uh, replayed the, the introduction in the very first mission where you ride over here to your save house. So that's the only reason why that was still sitting there. Okay, let's go on up here. Let's not run over the cop. Run on up here. Like I said, it's a shame we can't play the, the nice rocking 80 soundtrack for you. But, you know, get your, hands on the, uh, get your hands on the game and play it yourself. Or just, you know, anywhere on YouTube you can... There are several several places where you where people have recorded and uh, uploaded the entire um, the entire recording of each and every one of the radio stations. So you can actually sit there, and if you want to listen to the radio stations, complete with commentary and and commercials and everything, you can sit and listen to them. I'm gonna walk in here. Hmm. Excuse me. I was hoping to finish up and. See a fist fight with the cops down there. That is one thing I was actually just talking about it in the last GTA 3 episode that I put up. Ooh, 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 let's go down here and get this. Damn, yeah, we got a pistol and a billy club. Awesome. For free. Did not have to kill the cop ourselves to get it. You'll see here in this game, unlike GTA 3, um, this is the first game where the cops will actually chase after the street villains. They will actually chase after people other than you. So that is a good improvement going on as well. All right, we're going to head into the Hotel Harrison here and get the next mission started. Go get some sleep, he says. <laughs> I have been sitting in this chair all night with the lights off drinking coffee. This is a disaster. We are so screwed, man. These gorillas, listen to me, are gonna come down here and rip my head off. It's ri ridiculous. I did not go to law school for this. Okay, now what the hell are we gonna do? Shut up, sit down, relax. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. 
You're gonna find out who took our cocaine. And then I'm gonna kill them. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh, there's this retired colonel, Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez. He's the one that helped me set up this deal well away from Vice City's established thugs, okay? Now listen, he's holding his party out in the bay on his expensive yacht and all of Vice City's big players are gonna be there, okay? I have an invite, of course I have an invite, but there's no way that I'm going out there sticking my head out the door, no I way, not I told you, happen. shut up, I'll go myself. Oh, whoa, 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 hey, I like 1978 too, but you know, this isn't gonna be a beer and strippers do. I mean, no offense, but I think that you might turn heads on the runway for the wrong reason. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? Okay, look, here, stop by Raphael's, tell him I sent you. He'll make you look respectable. Okay, go, come on. Who does that guy think he is? Now I gotta dress like a chump as well as hang out with him? I like this shirt. I like this shirt too, you know? <laughs> and yes, this is also, as I said, you know, as you go along, okay, there we go. We got a t-shirt on the map now. So that is a clothing store. So you'll see this game is starting to add in various things that um, that you'll find in the later GTA games. Like I said, so much of so much of GTA 3, so much of the later games have their roots in GTA 3, but you'll see a lot here in, in Vice City that starts coming up. For instance, the motorcycles, the new vehicles and all that. And we start having we start having the uh, the we get a wardrobe it's not anywhere near as extensive as the wardrobes are in in uh, GTA 5 of course and and really not even as extensive as they are in San Andreas once again that was that was one of the disappointments that people had in in GTA 4 GTA 4 genuinely was a step backwards from from San Andreas you were able to do so much more you know, uh, you'll see when we get to San Andreas, I mean, all the clothing that you can buy and the outfits you can make and the, the tattoos and the customization. I think that was a, a large part of why San and why uh, GTA 4 um, just was treated with disappointment the way it was. I love the Miami setting. Look at all the neon lights coming on. Just awesome. Let's go on into Raphael's here and see what he can set us up with. Oh yeah, baby. Mm, nice bike. That is total 1986. Total 1986 Miami Vice look right there, baby. All right. Nice bike. He was hinting, so why don't we go and steal this guy's bike? There you go. Obviously, that was a hint to go over here and take it, so that if you didn't take the Faggio in the first in the first part. Which is quite possible. It is very possible that you wouldn't have picked the Faggio up. That you would have uh, instead have ridden the Admiral. So this in gets you onto a bike. And look how the look at his jacket. Look at the way his jacket is blousing in the wind there. See how it's fluttering in the wind as the wind goes into the jacket sleeves and the collar and it flutters behind him. That's called blousing. Such a nice effect to see that happen. All right, let's come on down here. Right out there is the Colonel's yacht. But before we go there, let's see if we can swing right down here because I believe that we have... Let's see, these underground parking garages are always a good place to look for stuff. Good spot for them to, uh, to hide things. And as I said, there are hidden packages in the... Yep, there we go. Hidden packages in the game, and here's the first one we're going to collect. The hidden packages in this game look like, I guess, little tiki idols type things. But like uh, the tiki gods. So there we go. There's our first of a hundred hidden packages. So we're going to be getting back on that train as well. All right, let's hop back on the freeway. Let's go on upstairs, hit the marker, and get the first mission here going, the party. Buenas noches. 
I understand you are here on the behalf of Mr. Rosenberg. I hope any recent problems have not affected his health or uh, mental well-being, Mr. Bersetti. He's just got a touch of <laughs> agoraphobia. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And you? I just want my merchandise. Ah, it's an unfortunate set of circumstances for all involved. Of course, I have initiated my own lines of inquiry, but such a delicate matter will take time. Perhaps we'll talk later. Meanwhile, let me introduce you to my daughter. Miss Davis! Karamia, could you look after our guest while I attend to my necessary obligations? Of course, Daddy. Please, excuse me. Mercedes? You try living with him. Anyway, let me point out some of our more distinguished guests. That's our Congressman Alex Shrub with rising silicone star, Candy Sachs. And have you met my lovely wife, Laura? No? Well, uh, unfortunately, she's in Alabama. This is Candy. And over there, we have the Vice City Mamba's star titan, BJ. Always the charmer. I blocked down on him, and then I put him in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Well, now, I'm looking at some prime... And list. that poolside amphibian is Jez Torrent, lead singer with... Love fest. Yeah, can I tell you? Do you know how they play ping pong in Thailand? Let me tell you. It does not involve a paddle, <laughs> if you know what. Impotent. And the chatty trio, that sleeping sweat gland is Papa's right hand gimp, Gonzalez. And the other two are Pastor Richards and pseudo intellectual film director Steve all Scott. All throws a passion with the Nipho invaders when the giant shark comes in and just bites their dicks off. Ah, now, you never saw anything like that before. Colonel, your party's as ever a triumph. <laughs> I can only apologize. Oh, well, they're not, day. amigo. How do we find you? <laughs> Our business is very dry. Barbarians at the gate. A time for rewarding one's friends and liquidating one's enemies, amigo. Who's the loudmouth? Ricardo Diaz. He's Mr. Cole. Mercedes! Oh, I was just taking my friend back into town. Another time, Ricardo. Ricardo, let's go Let's get there. out of here. Sure Actually, take me to the pole position. Drinks. All righty. Now, at this point, basically that whole party out there on the boat, you just got introduced to most of the major players for probably the first third of the game, if not the first half of the game. And I see a weapon pickup over there, do I not? Is that another pistol? I'm wanting to say that's another pistol. Let's see if we can get around it. Uh, excuse me, Mercedes. I do believe that is another pick pistol pickup. So there you go. We know where we can get free pistols at now. So awesome. Okay. Um, yes, we just got introduced to basically most of the, the players in the first third or... or um, half of the the story here where did that car go there was a really nice sports car parked here that just disappeared all right Let's see if we can get in the stretch instead will you be working for my father maybe do you mind me resting my hand in your lap maybe it's so difficult having a rich and powerful father vamos <laughs> Said I was going to hop in that sports car there. You can take the bike, and actually it's uh, probably, since the bike's sitting here, probably um, expected for you to take the bike. Remember in the very first introductory movie where you see basically Tommy and and Mercedes here driving down the road in, in the, the introductory uh, the credits movie that we saw in the very first episode. You see the two of them going down the road on a uh, bike together with her riding behind them. So, of course, it's expected you're going to take it. However, there's a little kind of mini sort of Easter egg there that if you get into a car with her, um, you hear her say that about, do you mind me putting my hand in your lap? That's the only time you're going to get that. So it's good to hop into a car if you want to hear that line there. We are going to head on down here to the pole position. Basically... Everyone that you saw in that boat is going to turn up here in the next, uh, like I said, the beginning, probably the beginning half of the game. Um, except for one, Pastor Richards. 
He's kind of like uh, the character Darko from the the original GTA, and that he was originally intended to have a a big part. He was going to be one of the the players, one of the people bosses that gave you missions and all. But he was uh, cut out of it. His missions were cut back and cut back and cut back really toward the end because there's a lot of concept art and kind of like a final characterization and he's even mentioned there on the boat um but then that's the only time you ever hear him mentioned he's never mentioned again and all his part as a boss and all was cut out of the game let's go on up and stop see you around handsome i'm sure you will Must be jelly, because jam don't shake like that. All right. See there, we've got our street outfit and our safe houses now. So now we can, got a choice of outfits. We can wear the, I think they call this the Mr. Versetti outfit. Ah, soiree outfit. There you go. Soiree outfit, and that's where we can go and pick up this. And then our street outfit, we can get at all the safe houses as they go along. As I said, another thing that you're going to see as we go along that has been introduced in this particular game, and you can still kind of consider this GTA 3 because this was, as we've said, originally an expansion. It just uses kind of an updated, they use Renderware, was the program they used to create the game. And this is using a updated version of it. As you see right here, everywhere you see these little icons, you can buy property so you can start buying property here you have something to do with your money besides just having it come up as a score it actually means something now and the pole position great name it's a strip club so we already like mercedes because she likes she's like carmen she likes to go and uh hang out at the strip club let's go ahead and get in the stretch mercedes also there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, telephone conversations with her that are in the program that are not used, where originally they were going to do something like what they eventually brought into in San Andreas and uh, GTA 4, they were going to allow you to have dating. And she was going to be someone you could date. There's things where she calls you up on the phone and tells you that she's lonely and wants you to come see her and don't forget about her and and this kind of stuff. But that part was kind of like the, the motorcycles and all in GTA 3, the dating was cut out of uh, by city simply because it was a little bit difficult for them to implement. We are gonna go in and we are going to go ahead and save this up. Let's go to, let's see, right here. So we are now through with the park. All right, folks, just a brief intermission, interjection here to uh, put in some stuff that I had to look up. Um, I meant to have this done before the episode, but uh, I'd forgotten to do it. Uh, Colonel Cortez back there is voiced by Robert Davi. Um, you will remember him from uh, Die Hard. He was in uh, The Goonies. He also played on TV and like Criminal Minds, The A-Team, and CSI. Uh, Mercedes, his daughter, is played by Faruka Balk. Um, she probably remember her from being in The Craft. She was one of the witches in the, the movie The Craft. It's probably what she's best known. But also, she was Dorothy in the Return to Oz movie. She was the little, I guess, nine or 10 year old Dorothy in the movie Return to Oz. So she was in that, and she was also had a part in the movie Waterboy. And then finally, Ricardo Diaz, the, the loudmouth on the boat that Mercedes said was Mr. Coke, is voiced by Luis Guzman. And his probably most famous movie was Carlito's Way, but he was also in some other movies like Dumb and Dumber-er. And then he was in TV shows Narco and Frasier and NYPD Blue and Oz and Miami Vice and a whole bunch of other movies like that. So that got the list of the voice actors from this episode out of the way. So now on with our previous um, discussion here already in progress. 
Okay, let's see how long it's been. About 18 minutes. We are going to uh, stop right there as far as as far as the storyline and all goes. When we come back next time, this stretch will be gone. Well, because we'll be loading in from a we will be loading in from a uh, an actual save game. And as I said, they do not they do not. Um, count this is a they do not count this as a a place where you can actually uh, save things in your safe house that's what we're trying to do right there let's let's get back to oh lord all right let's look this way there we go and now walk back this way all right <laughs> there we go boy that took a bit of effort didn't it it's the difference between the, the classic controls and the standard controls. The standard's what I usually play in. It's the one where you don't ever go into first person. You, you, you use the uh, left to move around and the right to, to turn and change your viewpoint. And the classic is this one right here where he runs in whatever position you actually put the joystick in. And whenever you use the other mouse, use the other thumbstick, it goes into first person view. So there you are. All right. Thanks for coming along. As I said, next time we will, looks like being heading back over to uh, to the lawyer's office. That's what the L stands for, the lawyer. We'll be heading back to him, let him know how the party went, and see what he has to say. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming along, and uh, we will see you then. Bye-bye.